Thank you everybody to be here, to chose to attend this session. I am a neurologist, as I said, and uh, I've been working uh, with the juvenile uh, Huntington disease and children affected with Huntington disease since a long time. So I had the opportunity to meet so many families in my life, some with uh, such a uh, tough experience to deal with this kind of variant of the disease. So first of all, um, this, is, this will be a non-technical uh, presentation. So apologies for uh, not going into details. I will remain fully available to discuss with all of you, even personally or by mail, uh, for any details that you want to ask about uh, scientific uh, or clinical details concerning juvenile onset and disease. Together with Lauren Byrne, I think if, if she agrees, perhaps we need to, just to be sure what we intend for juvenile Huntington disease, because there is so much confusion about that. So let's uh, give an explanation of what we want to say what we want to describe with the juvenile Huntington disease. For us, juvenile Huntington disease is when the disease starts before age 20. This is a conventional uh, description that doesn't make real sense. I mean, it's not a scientific description. It's just a conventional description that, is a star that started many years ago when the, the, the disease was discovered at the beginning of the story. And uh, we now say juvenile onset Huntington disease because we want to uh, s the, uh, specify that the, for us the disease is a juvenile when the onset is before age 20. People may be adult people or older people and uh, be affected by juvenile onset Huntington disease. But when the disease starts before age 18, we name that as pediatric Huntington disease or pediatric onset Huntington disease because a person might be affected when uh, uh, the person is uh, in the adolescence and uh, becomes adult. So we need to specify that in this case we are talking about pediatric onset HD. That is different from pediatric HD when the, a kid is affected and is uh, still a kid and not uh, uh, beyond the uh, age of 18. And in this case, we may have kids with the disease that becomes affected when they are also two years old, or in my experience, 18 months old. So it happens, it's rare, but it may happen. And in this case, there are some particular genetic conditions determining this kind of a disease, this variant of the disease. So just to, as, as, as a premise, just to, to be all of us on the same page uh, and provide you with a toolbox uh, in, uh, for it concerned terminology. Uh, where did all start about juvenile Huntington disease? In my experience, I can say, I was discussing that with Oliver Quarrel just this morning, Everything started when the European Hunt Disease Network promoted the working group on juveniles. And since then, we started to improve our knowledge on this variant. And so much moved on since then. So I perfectly remember, I was talking about that with Oliver Quarrel, when he, for the first time, uh, reached me out in 2004, they asked me to join the working group on juvenile Huntington disease. So many years uh, <laughs> have, have passed by then. And uh, uh, we, I remember, we met for the first time in an international meeting on juvenile Huntington disease in 2006 in London, in the UK. And some years later, we were able to uh, produce such a uh, very nice book from a uni Oxford University Press together with uh, uh, very well-known colleagues like uh, uh, Oliver, uh, Bernard Landermeyer, 
uh, Martin Haynes, Roger Bakker, uh, and uh, Ellen Santini uh, that is here. And uh, uh, she is um, a, a person with a, a great experience of juvenile lung disease. So this, is, this was the first experience where uh, we tried uh, to describe as uh, good as we could the, the such complex variant. And uh, within that book, th there is a chapter I took care, uh, together with a colleague from the UK at the time, Roman Bonitel, who, uh, and we, dis we described, for, I think for the first time, that there could be a difference in the biology between when uh, with, within the people with very long uh, mutations, very long and expanded repeats, and uh, people without such a long expanded repeat, even if the mutation is present. And uh, this is, for example, uh, 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 this is an example of what we observe in the lymphoblastoid cell lines that are uh, cells from uh, blood that have been treated and immortalized with a virus to test them in a lab. And we found that there was a biological difference between uh, those people with the large expansions of 60 and more and the people with uh, adulthood <coughs> mutations. So the, the question was, in my mind, perhaps we need to take a look to extremes. So what happens if we look into uh, uh, specific subpopulations, like for example, those people with the very large mutations and expanded mutations, and what we may learn from studying such rare conditions that we do not observe just because we are not able to see what is uh, 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 really happening in their clinical manifestations and biology. And uh, for us, extremes are pediatric concert uh, patients with the very extended mutations, with the neurological onset the since first years of life, with an extremely rare occurrence. And when we went into this court, we found that in the reality, kids in this condition are progressing much more severely than adults. And unfortunately, they have uh, a reduced lifespan compared to adult people. It was the first time that uh, researchers noticed that we noticed such kind of difference in the clinics, together with a sort of other, uh, 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 many other uh, difference in uh, uh, neuropathological uh, changes and uh, in uh, other uh, clinical uh, assay. And uh, we learned so much about pediatric OCHD uh, uh, so far, uh, even thanks to uh, specific programs. So you must know that the scientific community is well focused on it. There are programs focusing on juvenile onset and the disease and pediatric country disease that are funded projects with a lot of effort of many people, many researchers, even few, even in a few, the, the, the number of patients is so reduced, so small, so um, uh, uh, it's a rare condition. But thanks to this rare to do the, these uh, research programs, we improve the knowledge of clinics. We understand now that the presentation is completely different. There are neurodevelopmental delays. There is uh, something typical in the imaging that we do not observe in the adult people. And uh, something is changing also in their biology. Of course, we need to learn some more. And there is another important program that Lauren will present to you uh, just later, uh, just after my presentation. And uh, in the meantime, uh, we, un we, we learned that there are atypical brain patterns in kids with the pediatric HD. There is a, a presentation that is completely different with this, uh, 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 speech delay, blurred speech, uh, working issues, uh, gait abnormalities since the first steps of the life, uh, uh, reduced body mass, 
and uh, also neurofilaments, of course, that are particularly increased in concentration in the blood, and uh, Lauren will uh, remark that. And uh, there is a, 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 an important, uh, uh, an, an impressive uh, gr uh, and, and increased uh, uh, frequency of, inf of epilepsy in children. And that also the development of the disease is completely different with uh, 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 no chorea at all, uh, and uh, dystonia is worsening during time, and uh, acceleration of motor impairment. And more recently, more recently, also an involvement of peripheral organs. Uh, kids, and not just kids, I can say, also uh, a court of uh, adolescent people might manifest with steatosis, which is apparently not symptomatic. I mean, it's just uh, uh, fat that is uh, infiltrating uh, an organ without cons apparently consequences. Uh, uh, and uh, we, should, we need to take in, uh, into account that this is something that uh, usually happens when uh, you abuse with alcohol. But of course, uh, we are talking about uh, young kids, so it's something that we cannot explain. But we don't, we, we, what we know is that the liver is uh, an important organ with the mitochondrial function involvement and uh, also uh, glucose homeostasis, a lot of other important function. So, few cases, lot of work. We need your collaboration, the collaboration of families. We need to involve people in our research. If we want to understand what will happen tomorrow, we need to uh, uh, collaborate and uh, cooperate with, uh, with you, and uh, we need, of course, to uh, uh, you have access to, to, to specific programs. Uh, here, there are a couple of examples. We have in Italy uh, Spazio Huntington, that is a place for children. We are promoting this initiative. Uh, we host people with the small kids who are just at risk in a non-medical environment where we try to uh, interact with them. Just we observe while they are playing. And this is a way to observe them without stress and without emotional, emotionally involve, uh, involving parents, because of course this is an important point. All parents are very worried about their children, of course. So, and uh, they don't want to, we understand things in advance, that uh, what, uh, what I, I, I understand. So that, 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 that's the first. And the other one is, of course, enrolled HD is uh, uh, crucial for us to follow up longitudinal patients and the kids and the juvenile onset patients. And the role HD is, of course, an important uh, uh, instrument. It's a compass for us, I say. Something that uh, uh, indicates to us the right direction in the research. Uh, uh, and uh, finally, uh, someone asked uh, in Ask the Expert about the frequency of the disease. There are clusters of antino disease, but there are also clusters of pediatric and juvenile onset antino disease. There are some parts of the world where the frequency of juvenile patients is particularly high. This is an example from the Middle East, and uh, such kind of frequency might be influenced by genetic background. Uh, we documented the something related to haplotypes, but then you don't want to go into details about that because it's a, a difficult story to explain and fully available to, to, to talk with everybody uh, in, to, 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 to provide additional information about that. But my final uh, uh, clue and my final uh, recommendation to all of you is please come and join our programs. We are based in Rome, uh, Lauren is, is based in London. Uh, we are not that far from everybody at the end of this, the day. So there are uh, countries that are not close to us that may come and may in any way take part uh, in uh, specific programs. And Role HD is, an, uh, is one example. Another example is, of course, Join HD Registry. Uh, which uh, Lauren will talk about in a few minutes. Thank you. Hi, everybody. 
Um, so we're doing a nice double team um, for you. So um, coming from HGO and, and one thing we've noticed in supporting young people and people like yourselves is the real lack of knowledge and understanding. And as much as great people, scientists like Nando and people like Pagnopolis that are doing really important research in juvenile HD, comparatively and relatively speaking, it is really underrepresented. Um, there's a lot of issues in terms of getting diagnoses. I'm sure a lot of you have stories of how long it takes to get a diagnosis. Um, and no, there's a lot of issues with a defined care pathway and what happens when someone is uh, under 18 and then they turn 18 and then they're now in adult services. So we know how difficult and problematic this is. We also know that there's no drugs, just like Huntington's disease, but also that juvenile HD patients are not being included in current programmes. Um, and we know how much this impacts the families and people like yourselves and you know Huntington's disease is already isolating but if you've got juvenile HD and paediatric HD you know you're all my heroes for what you go through every day and but this is kind of our springboard for where we come to with join HD which is what we call a patient registry which is basically like a sign-up sheet but we're, we do this online on a um, Kind of like a website or software um, but the real idea is to really at first and foremost connect everyone and, and really try and build a global community of joint or juvenile onset hd patients and families um, increase our knowledge because i really believe that you guys are the ex experts specifically when it comes to johd you know there are you know people like nando are few or far between a lot of our hd experts are not juvenile hd experts and we need to change that um, and we want to try and start identifying our met needs and what, and hear from you guys what what you think are important, um, and and hopefully create sharing places where you can share knowledge with other people, and, and we can create new kind of care pathways and, and guidelines. Um, and really, this the the long term aim of this is being a, a platform for future research and eventually getting trials and 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 pharma um, enthused in in doing JHD. The whole experience is basically someone pre-registers and if anyone isn't already in it, I know some of you are, but um, please come and see us, but we can pre-register you and then we give you the information sheet um, in at the home set and we would arrange a screening call just to confirm that people are eligible because people will be coming from all over the world and, and we need to confirm. And then once that's confirmed we'll set you up with a login and then you kind of self-enroll yourself and can do it in your own time at home which we know is a lot easier so this is kind of how it looks and there's different ways to access it this is an update of where we are so we're at 70 pre-registrations so the pre-registrations will be the family members so that's usually the caregiver and so that's actually translating to more individuals on the platform itself but you can see already we are getting a global We've got people from all over. It might be small numbers now, but we really want to get to the hundreds because we know there's more of you out there. Um, this is just a highlight of some of the things that are getting. At this stage, we're just asking about questions about community engagement, um, and where you live and, and things like that. At future stages, we will start asking about um, symptoms and your experience with that. And maybe hopefully in future, um, more kind of robust, clinical assessments and, and maybe tools that we can, can link up. But I think something to highlight here is that we know how much more support is needed and that's um, evident from what we're seeing already. Um, so I'm going to change gear a bit and talk about this thing called Neurofilament Light, which is my own research. Um, it's a, this is a brain cell and it's high, the the fluorescence here is where all of this Neurofilament Light is in our brain cells. It helps the brain cells hold their shape which is really important for their function and how they connect with one another but when there's damage to neurons it gets released into the spinal fluid and subsequently blood um, and it, um, Nando um, mentioned about kids and kids JHD we were able to show that not only is it elevated in, in adult onset but it's also elevated in juvenile onset HD and this is my own work that I've, I've been really lucky to get a, a large fellowship from the Medical Research Council in the UK just to focus on juvenile onset HD, which um, is um, 
I love that we can do that. It's called Influence HD. And we are trying to develop a way to collect blood remotely so we can send you testing kits at home. You can do it yourself and then send it back to us. Um, Annabelle and Alexa and here are, are my team that we're working on this and getting some really good data to show that it, it is the same. But the idea will, ho in the future, in the next year or two, to invite people that are enjoying HD, if they would like to participate, they can consent remotely and do this in their own home. And then we can eventually, this could be a potential outcome measure for trials and things like that. A little word on trials. So this is a very complex slide. Um, <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> but what I want to highlight here, this is, um, we talked a bit in the session, which you would have, might have missed on Huntington Loring. There's lots of different things happening and, and lots of different companies that are developing programs, some in, in, in the clinic already, in trials. Um, we know that juvenile HD isn't in that yet, but all of these mechanisms, it's the same gene, same mutation. Obviously, there's a difference in more extremes, as we've talked about, and there are differences in biology. But in terms of Huntington lowering, I believe that this, these are transferable to JRHD. So in the future, if we keep working with pharma, hopefully programs will come available for JRHD as well. Um, <coughs> this is just kind of highlighting what I say. It's the same mutation. I think Nanda wanted to talk a bit about Plenia. More about what you already said, uh, the resource of Pilenia, and then of course, we, uh, I don't know whether uh, some of you were in the session of Pilenia. And they announced that in, should they have a good results, they will go on with the juvenile patients as well. That is fine. So it is important to remark that all farmers that we uh, inquired asked positively that they are going to go forward for uh, helping uh, juvenile people. And uh, uh, just mentioning Prilenia, just because it's a phase three that is close to end. And they're the so, first uh, to have publicly admit that yeah. they're announced that they are planning yeah. trials in juvenile HD. So it's really exciting. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I highlight Enroll HD again, if you can, please take part. Not every centre sees people that are under 18, but if you can, take part. Um, a new update to HD Clarity is now included in juvenile HD patients, so I think um, there'll be more information on that going forward, but certain sites might start seeing JHD patients. Um, but most importantly, stand up and join HD and join the community. You know, we need it needs to come from you guys, and we need you to tell people you're here and you need support, and that's what we want to help you do. So with that, we would love any question, to answer any questions. Uh, <laughs> Hi. Um, just a question with the Join HD, because in Australia right now, my and all that are doing yeah. HD. Yeah. Blinked. Yeah, right. yeah, we so would love to. No, I know it's a yeah. bit more complicated, but I, <laughs> I know what you mean. But um, that's a great. They have a really great registry, and I've seen that because it's Julie Stout. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. Sure um, we were actually talking because Kelly Atkins is here. He works with Jelly, Julie Stout, and she works at H, or she's on the board of HDO. Um, the thing is that's national and we want to set something that's international because yeah. with JHD numbers is going to be the thing mm -hmm. and I think to do that we need to go worldwide to get hopefully hundreds and things and then we can actually start asking the real questions because that's what's limited us um, before you know I, I showed the, re the the graph before what we've done but that's in like nine twelve people mm -hmm. okay. you know to really start asking questions we need we want to get more more numbers and that's why we've taken this approach and this is uh, we're trying to make it as burdenless as possible for you I know how hard it is at home um, the more we can make this easy is what we're trying so if you do want to know more about it um, Annabelle and Alexa and I've been at the booth um, uh, where there's a joint HD booth downstairs go get a selfie um, and yeah talk to them if you want to we can help you get pre-registered while you're here if you're if you would like to as well um so yeah please get in touch but um any other questions we'd love to hear mm. don't be shy <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I would like to ask a question about jail in the, the, the registry 
So currently just HDO, okay. um, the plan is, I mean, at the minute, there's nothing kind of, per, um, the only thing that's going in it right now is the, that's why we do the pre-registration form. So all the identifiable information is completely separate. And then at one, we set up them up with like a number to go in the registry itself. Um, we are in the process of changing platforms as well. Um, we find someone, but we're, we decide not to go with them. So we're in search of a kind of more user-friendly platform because the current one isn't amazing um, and like I said we want to make this as easy as possible but the idea is that we would then be able to kind of create data sets that could be used by academics and maybe pharma I think a lot of the building on this is getting pharma to fund it and um, that's kind of our bit the model we're trying to engage um, pharma and access funds that so that it's it shouldn't take away from what HDO is doing in the sponsorship. It should be like a medical affairs thing. Um, so it's just a bit complicated. We're, we're juggling a lot. But um, we, we, uh, Rebecca, our study coordinator, left in November and we haven't replaced her yet, which we're going to do after Congress. Um, so things have, you, you might have noticed things flattened out a bit, but that's it's really important to have. She was amazing and we'll get someone in soon. But at the minute, I've been trying to do things volunteer-wise <laughs> um, here and there. <laughs> um, but it, it does take that devoted person to kind of connect with the people. But the idea is we want this to be a springboard for people who want to do research with us. But the idea is we want HDO to have more control over that because we're very protective of the community and you guys. And um, But we also want to encourage research, not slow it down so we're not it, it, yeah can I ask a question to yeah. you guys <laughs> um, what do you guys feel about participating in research and for particularly for like to, yeah, for, particularly for <laughs> those effective yeah um, so if you could you'd want to I signed up it took five minutes amazing yeah. and we also want caregivers so it's caregivers and affected individuals can sign up and other like caregivers so <laughs> get on there <laughs> you, you can follow Annabelle and Alexa and after this they're very lovely um, uh, yes I just wanted to speak on behalf of a group of other GHG moms that I'm in contact with yeah Yeah, the listening session. Yeah. And it's our overall message was, we'll do anything. Yeah. And we know, I, we'll that's what... Do anything. Do anything. We'll, yeah. We'll fly anywhere we need mm -hmm. to be. You know, I mean... That's what we're hearing as well. Like Help for HD have done in May. Just tell us why I like it. Yeah. yeah. Well, issue, we'll do it. That's what I'm... Yeah, it's <laughs> taken a while to get, I think, you know... Prefer, consensus says we need somewhere hot. <laughs> well, my vision... <laughs> My dream is that in five years' time, there's going to be a there's going to be a joint HD Congress, so everybody involved in joint HD could come to that. That's what I would love to do. See in five years' time, um, and we'll do that summer hot. No idea. Not Scotland. Not no, Ireland. Ireland. Not the UK. We're coming. Maybe we'll come to you. We've got more continents. Yeah. That's that's a whole lot. Forty degrees today. Yeah. Forty degrees today. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm taking all of the feedback, guys. It's in the plan. <laughs> we just need our melatonin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Nando hosts a lot of research as well, so I don't know how much how open you are to people coming from other countries because yeah. I know you see other people, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. We are in touch with the people from other countries, so the Mediterranean area, for example. Yeah. So we are. In We have some issues in, at least in our centre, um, we can't see um, children um, without a paediatrician. So in the next five years I'm trying to network because we're literally right beside the Great Ormer Street Hospital for children. It's a different trust so everything's a bit, 
it seems so silly. We're literally next door. So I'm trying to make some connections with pediatricians so I can run natural history. Because we are sharing a family patient. Yeah. With the uh, with the uh, with the Sarah. Yeah, is Dara. Oh, I know who it is. Sorry, from, I shouldn't say that. From the Ukraine. Yeah, I know who it is. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, she came from. And now she has moved to England. Yeah, I was was there in her appointment. Yeah, um, yeah. 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 So that is nice. And, and, and but yeah. Sorry, she but definitely, there's yeah. like in the last year or two, there's been. Uh, definitely an energy for JOHD, which is really nice to see. I think a big thing for that, um, the EMA used to have a waiver for par- programs to, they didn't have to have a plan for pedi- pediatric studies and when they're marketing a drug and that's been removed. So now they have to say what they're going to do and that, that's, which is great for us. Uh, we can start getting them engaged and, and thinking a bit more about this because, you know, it's... <laughs> These happen, and yeah. That anyway means that uh, from one side there is an in, an increase of uh, of uh, a regulatory authority uh, sensitivity on this topic. Yeah. On the other side, there is an objective uh, difficulty from science and the researcher to to put together a court or patients with uh, pediatric cancer disease. And this is, a, of course, an art, a tough, uh, dif- an, an, art, uh, an important difficulty, of course, for pharma industries as well, because if they want to uh, answer to the regulatory authority, they need, we help, and we collaborate with them to, to put together a court of patients. So uh, it is important to uh, remark that this is absolutely um, a collaborative effort where all together we should uh, have a part. I'd say the, um, it took a while, I think, to maybe get professionals to realise why we're doing it from the family association side of things because it maybe is a different way to do things. Normally our research studies are run by the science organisations. Um, but I think for something like JOHD, it really needs to, we need to go all way. We, I think it's hard for them, maybe some professionals realise like a lot of people are not accessing care and special services. So there's people that you won't know about and that they won't know about. Um, and we think this is the way we can reach those people as well as the people that are seen in, in um in the clinics as well. Um, so I really need, if you know anybody other people impacted the more we can tell people about joint hd um and if you people do co- contact you guys for support please send them to hdo because we're we want to help we can maybe find them services we're good at like linking people with the right if they're from a different country and and need support so if you people reach out to you that are also impacted and don't know where to go send them to hdo send them to jenna we can we can try and and help them in some way. Okay, so thank you very much.